I'm switching back to Z Shell. There, I said it. If you've been following me for a while, you've probably seen my DevOps workflow on macOS video. And in that video, I made quite a spicy take on using Z Shell or Bash. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you why I switched back and also just highlight the differences and why I why this caused me to change. So on January 8th, 2023, I wrote this article about leaving Z Shell for now. At that point, I had been using Z Shell for nearly two years. And in this article, I you can find it on my website, I sort of explained the reasons why. Well, the biggest one is auto completion. So I noticed I've gotten used to Z Shell's excellent auto completion and menu navigation. When I log into service at work, there's always this little moment of, oh, I don't have that here. I want to get better at Bash so I'm not dependent on these external crutches anymore. And at this point, I had this really fancy prompt in Z Shell and I had a very elaborate configuration. And it was quite a up upsetting moment every time I needed to log into a remote system because that was what I was doing at the time. I was working as a Linux system administrator and I was logging into virtual machines all day long. So every time I was having this moment of, oh, I don't have my auto completion here, it actually broke up the flow. And as I'm more getting more and more competent at my work and staying in flow states and becoming more and more efficient and productive, these little things actually make a big difference. So I switched to Bash and I don't regret it. I still think that you should use Bash for a long time before you uh, use Z Shell if your workflow contains situations where you are likely to encounter Bash. And one way you are likely to encounter Bash is in containers. Now, let me just show you why I changed uh, or how I let, let me put it differently. I didn't miss Z Shell at all during this whole time. Like there was seriously, maybe after a week, I didn't realize I was missing anything at all. There, everything that I needed was already available in Bash to me. So up until recently, I never realized I e even switched basically, apart from that my environment was consistent everywhere. The reason why I... I noticed that there was a difference is because I started writing my own CLI. I have written this very simple ZK CLI where I can do ZK new and then it will prompt me for a name of the node or I can give it as an argument and then I would say uh, test demo video and now it opens a new node with this title in my Zettelkast and when I then run ZK day it will run it will show you that it has added this note title to the daily note in my system. And that's something that I wanted to do with a, a CLI that I wrote myself. Now, when I do that, you see when I've written, when I was writing that, I was using the, the typer um, framework in, in Python. And in the docs, they had this very beautiful, they have very, very good documentation. I highly recommend it. But they had these beautiful examples of completions in the CLI that also had descriptions based on the doc strings that you give to the functions. Now, <laughs> this looks really nice and my bash shell did not have this. So let me quickly demonstrate what it looks like in bash. So I will just docker run uh, it Ubuntu. Now I have a fresh Ubuntu syst system. I do apt update to pack update the packages and when that is done, I will run apt install bash completion and pipx. I'll just use pipx as an example because here if I, if I run pipx, this is how the, the completion looks like in Z Shell. I, I, look, I, I have this menu that I can tab through and it has all of the descriptions on the side. Now, when I do the same with pipx, now I have pipx installed, which pipx. If I then run pipx completions, it's going to show me how I can uh, enable completions. So I'll just copy that and paste that. So now I have completions for bash in my pipx. So pipx, tab, tab. And here you see it shows me 
the help required for both completions environment, it lists all of the options very well, no problem. I press tab tab, but the difference is it just poops out all of the options to the screen and then it's up to you to complete it further. And this works fine. I mean, I didn't miss any other way of completion for, well, what is it, one and a half years since I wrote that article. I just do pip x completions, tab tab, and then I see all of the, the options. So it works fine. But when I started writing my own CLI, and when I started noticing that actually there are these descriptions next to the options because I was writing them myself, then I felt, huh, that is actually really good. That in a way, this might even be more conducive to my workflow than having a b consistent bash environment. Mostly because I am not a virtual machine administrator anymore. I rarely log into virtual machines anymore. I, I don't do that very often any longer. I am mostly on my own system or in dev containers. And there comes my next point. But just a quick note, if you are interested in this kind of stuff, if you want to get better at the command line, you might want to check out my school community. We are now 340 members and we are constantly sharing knowledge. Everybody is CLI focused and wants to learn more about this. We're constantly sharing tips and, and new discoveries. It's a really great community and you can either follow my courses here about note taking, settle cast and method. You get unlimited access to 25 hours of courses and you can ask me questions directly by making posts or by joining one of the community calls that we have. All right, let's get back to the video. I most of my dev most if not all of my development is either happening or is going to happen in dev containers. If you don't know what they are, they are um, I'll post a link down below with a video about co dev containers that I made. But if you search for dev containers images, then there is this repo here that has the pre-built dev container images. These are the images that are included in VS Code. And this is also very likely that you're going to be encountering these images in your work, in your workflow as a DevOps engineer, as you're building environments for other developers. So I would rather have a workflow that is compatible with these images. So I go to a Python image, and if I check out the spec of this Python image, we see that in here, there's the dev container spec, and it installs the common utils. And here it says, install Z shell true. So every time a developer creates a, a pro project in VS Code, and they set up a dev container for it, it was likely that they're going to use the Microsoft base image for it if they're not creating them their own. And that image is going to include Z shell. So I am now in a situation where Z shell is actually going to be available wherever I am, practically. I'm not managing VMs anymore. I'm mostly working in dev containers or on my own system. And yeah, that, I, that means that I have Z shell everywhere. There is no need for this context switch to happen anymore. And besides that, I have now gained one and a half years of pure bash experience. And I feel I'm fluent in bash. I know how to debug it. I know how to solve problems that I have. I know it well. So now it's time for me to move, move on. And now I feel competent enough with the CLI that I can actually understand the differences between Bash and Z shell, and I can make an intelligent decision on what I prefer. And at this point, again, having these options here available to me is actually preferable. It will actually help me to uh, work through CLIs quicker. So in this sense, it's going to be an, an improvement to my workflow rather than um, uh, sticking to Bash. So yeah, there you have it. That's why I switched. Better auto completion, and because my Z shell is going to be available in the environments that I'm going to be working in. And note that before I used to have this very fancy prompt and all my Z shell, 
I don't need all that bloat. I have a very simple prompt here. And if I go to a repo, for example, if I go to my dot files repo, it will print the, the, the path that I'm in and whether there are changes on my branch. That's it. That's the only fanciness that I need in my, in my prompt. And I'm not going to be customizing it much further than that. It's all clean and minimal. I don't use all my Z shell. Everything is going, everything is configured in my Z shell RC. That is available in my dot files repo. And I'll create a full walkthrough of that file in the next video. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.